Hello subscribers, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am back with a new video. Today I will let you know 10 advanced Excel functions that will make you advance in Excel. So before starting this video, if you are new on my channel, please do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notification of my new video. So let's get started. Our first function is how we can use VLOOKUP plus MATCH function in Excel. So here you can see we have the data set like we have product name, then we have year data that is year prices for different products, then 2025, then 2026. So these are the prices we have and just what is the requirement and what we have to find in this part, find the price for monitor for the year 2025. Here we have product name and here we have year and just I want to find out the price with the help of VLOOKUP and MATCH function. So I will use is equal to VLOOKUP so VLOOKUP is what? VLOOKUP is vertical lookup. It will look for a value in the leftmost column of a table and returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. By default, the table must be sorted in ascending order. So I'm just opening this bracket or parenthesis. Simply we have to select the lookup value. So what is my lookup value? This monitor is my lookup value because I want to find out the price for monitor. So simply we will use monitor and then comma and what is the table array? Table array is the table in which you have the data set. So this whole data set is my table array. Then comma now for column index number we will use match function. Is equal to match or match function we will use here. What is the lookup value in this match function? So I just want to looking for this year. So this is my lookup value. Then comma, what is the lookup array? So this year is present in which range in this product row. So I will select this product row. So this is my lookup array. Then comma, now what is the requirement of match type here? I just want to find out the exact value. Exact value, I will use zero here. Close the bracket, then comma, and zero for exact match. Even you can type here false. Both are same. You can type zero or you can type false. Now we are getting 12,500, so it's correct. You can see we are getting the correct result. And what is the benefit of this? If you will type a laptop, let me type a laptop, I will get 57,000 and it's correct. And if I will change here year, let's say if I will change here 2026, I will get here 59,000. So it is automatically calculated by using this VLOOKUP plus MATCH function. You don't have to change the index numbers like uh, in manual method we are just typing one two three four like this in curly brackets but by using match function you can find out and you can make this function dynamic this vlookup and match function is the best way that you can match your data and you can look for your data in this excel now i'm just moving to next function that is we have the xlookup function with wildcard so what is this wildcard right now what is the scenario that i have here so I have employee IDs, then name, then department, and then email. Now what I want to find out here, search email for employee whose name contains Rao, R-A-O, Rao. So here you can see I have a name which contains Rao and what I want to find out, I just want to find out email of this name. But here we have we don't have to use Anita Rao, right? This is the full name. We don't have to this full lookup value. I just want to use here wildcards. So how we can use that is equal to, we will use X lookup function. Then what is the lookup value? Now we will use wildcards. So here, but how we can use this wildcards? We can use by using double quote, a strict sign, double quote, then ampersand, then select, this row that is your text that you want to search and that is your lookup value but with wildcards again ampersand and in double quotes you can use again this asterisk sign again double quotes so this whole become my lookup value now use comma what is the lookup array so i just want to look this value in this range where i have this row name is present so then you can use comma and what is the return array I want? I want in return this email ID. So I will use this email ID. Now use comma. You cannot, we don't have requirement of using this if not found. I'm just skipping this part, comma. Now we have the match mode. This is very important in this XLOOKUP function. Now what I'm using this wildcards. So I will select this. So this asterisk sign is wildcard 
character. So I'm using this two. So just use xlookup with wildcard. I have to type two. I will close the bracket. Now I'm getting this Anita dot r at the rate company dot com. So just by using raw, I'm getting my correct result. And let's say if I will use here Varma, I will get the email ID related to Varma. You can even check. We are getting the correct result. So this is how we can use this xlookup with wildcards. Now I'm just moving to next function, which is we have the scenario how to use filter with two criteria in Excel. So what is the task that we have? Show only orders from East where status is equal to paid. So we have two terms here, East and paid. And here in this data set, you can see we have order ID, customer, reason, amount and status. So we have East in this reason column and we have paid in this status column. And just I want to filter the entries by using filter function is equal to filter. So what is the array I want in return that is called as array. So I will select this whole range of my data set. Then comma, what is the include part? So I just want to search first what? East. So here we can simply select this range where this East is present. Then I will use is equal to and then I can simply type in double quotes, double quotes East. So now this is my first criteria or this is my first include part. And I just want to use second part also. So I will use a strict sign, a strict sign because I want I want to use here two criteria. Again, use double quote. Again, use bracket parentheses and now you can select your second criteria range use is equal to now the second criteria is paid so I will type here paid in double quote close this bracket again close the bracket you will get your result in two row even you can check so we have in east reason this paid status so this will be the entry so this become the entry of particular this formula and for the second second part even you can check we are getting the correct result so two entries we are getting by using this filter function if you have two criteria you can use this filter function and this is how we can use that now i'm just moving to next function that is v stack function so v stack is vertical stack like if you want have if you have multiple data set in and you want to compile that data set in one range so that you can use this v stack function v stack now simply select the array so what is the array one so simply i will select this array one this is my q1 data and what is the array two we can select the second array q2 data and we can close the bracket we will get that data compiled so this is how we can compile our data set one by one we can stack vertically by using this v stack function v stack function so I'm just moving to next trick that is how to use text split function with multiple delimiters. So here you can see we have multiple delimiters like we have semicolon, then comma, then hyphen, then semicolon. And I just want to split this text in different columns. So how we can split? We can use text split function. First we need to select the text. And now in column delimiters we can type multiple delimiters in curly brackets. So in curly brackets and double quotes my first delimiter is the semicolon. So I will use the semicolon, then comma in double quote. My second delimiter is comma. So all these delimiters you have to type separated by comma. Now the third delimiter is hyphen. And the fourth delimiter is, okay. So we have the same four delimiters. So now we have only three delimiters, which are the multiple delimiters. I will use this curly bracket, close the bracket, and you will get your text splitted in different range or in different cells. So this is how we can use this text split function with multiple delimiters. Now I'm just moving to next function that is here how we can use PMT function in Excel. We have loan amount, we have annual rate and we have years and I just want to calculate monthly payment by using PMT function that is payment function. First we need to select the rate. So rate is what my annual rate. I just have to divide this by 12 because I just want to find out monthly payment. Now next we have number of periods. So number of periods is five. I just want to change this number of periods into months. So I have to multiply this by 12. I will use a strict sign and this 12. 
Now my PV and the present value is what this 5 lakh. So I will use minus because I want the result in positive. So I will use minus here and I will select this loan amount. I will close the bracket and I will get the correct result of my monthly payment by using this PMT function. Now I'm just moving to next function that is index match. So how we can use this index match and what is the scenario here? We have name, we have math marks, we have science marks and we have English marks. I just want to get science score for Neha. So how we can get is equal to index. So what is the array? Uh, so I want in return or I want to search in this whole array. So I will select this whole array as my index and then we have to define here row number. So in row number, I will use match function. So I just want to look for what? Neha science marks. So my first lookup value will be Neha. What is the lookup array? So this Neha is present in this particular range. And I want to find out exact match. So this is my first criteria. And in column also, I just want to find out science so i will use again this match function just to make it dynamic so what is my local value now i just want to find out science and which array and this lookup array and what is the match type i want exact match i will close the bracket again you can close the bracket we are getting 92 so this part is correct no so this part is not correct why because we have to select this array of particular science like this. Now we are getting 88. So now this part is correct. Here you can see in this second match, we need to select our array according to the array that you have defined in index. Here I have defined from A to D. In the second match for the column, we have to define from A to D only. This is how we can define. And we are getting 88. So for this Neha and let's say if I will change here instead of Neha, if I will use here Rohit, Rohit science, I will get 80. So this part is also correct. So this is how we can use this index match function. If we have multiple criteria, like I have two criteria here. First is this name. Second is this math or science or English means subject. Subject is my second criteria. So this is how we can use this index match. Now I'm just moving to next function that is text join function. So how we can use this text join function and what is the scenario here? We have employee name, then we have skill one, skill two and skill three. And I just want to find or I just want to compile all these skills in these cells. Combine all skills for each employee separated by comma. So we have to use comma in between. So instead of doing it manually like this comma. So it will be time consuming if you will do it manually. So instead of this, we can use text join function. So what is the delimiter I want? I want comma for the delimiter and I want to ignore the empty cells. I will use this true and simply we can select this range that I want to combine. So just by using this text join function, we are getting the combined text. This is a very simple function that you can use. And even if you want space, after this comma, you can use space also. Now you will get the space after the comma. I'm just moving to next function. That is now we have the sum plus offset function. This is very important function. Now you can see what is the use of this. Let me showcase you right now. I'm getting work days here. Okay. I have already typed here eight and I'm getting profit related to eight work days. So how it is calculated? If I will type here five, let's say I will get 8,300. So if you will check the total of five working days, you have the sum of 83. So how we have applied this sum plus offset function. Let me showcase you this part. You can simply start with sum. What is the number? So simply we will select the sum or the cell. So this is the cell from where I just want to do. I want to start the sum range. I will use here colon. Automatically, I will get B12 colon B12 if I will press colon. Delete this B12 that is the extra one. Instead of this, you can use here offset function. So for offset, first we need to give the reference. So I just want to start the reference from this first profit, first working day profit. And then use comma. I have to skip this row rows part because that is not required in this scenario. 
and now we have to define the columns so columns i just want to count right one two three four five like this but here i've already typed work days you can see simply i can select this work days because i want to get the total of five working days and i want to make it dynamic that's why i have selected the cell and now if i will close the bracket i'm getting 9900 so let me check for the five for the five working days the total is 8300 so it is not correct so what we have to do in this scenario this reference this offset function is starting the counting from the second one from the reference is starting the counting from here one two three four five so and it is calculating calculating this six total like one to six total that's why you're getting 9900 so here what we can do we can just do minus one after this b3 minus one now i'm getting the correct result by using this sum and offset function if i will type here nine i will get the total of nine nine work days here you can see 12 0 5 0 we are getting in this profit so this is the scenario that you can use when you want to make it dynamic sum range in that case you can use this offset function and if you want to make any function dynamic like this you can use this offset function like this if any doubt in this function you can even do the comment related to this function i will quickly uh, answer that question if any doubt related to offset or any other function now i'm just moving to next function that is pivot by and that is the last function of this video so what is the scenario here how we can use pivot by function and here we have the data set instead of using pivot table now we have the pivot by function in excel 365 so we will use pivot by so what is the requirement i just want to find out category wise amount so where we have the category the c column has the category and in this e column we have the amount and now what is the row field row field i want in row field this category part so i will select this category column with the heading and now I have selected by using shift control down arrow key. Again, I will showcase simply you can select this cell that is C3 cell where we have the category and then use shift control down arrow key to select this range. If you want to go back to the formula, you can press control backspace. Now comma, what is the column field requirement? I don't want any column field requirement in this part because I want to find out category wise amount. I will just skip this part. Now we have the values values part so in the values we will select this amount cell and shift control down arrow key control backspace to move back to the formula then you comma and i just want to find out sum of category wise so i will use some function here then comma and also i want to showcase field header so i will use this three yes and show and here by using this pivot by function we are getting our result without using pivot table and we are getting our summary just by using this pivot by function and what is the benefit of this it is fully dynamic why i'm saying this dynamic let's say we have here one more category i'm just taking example let's say we have computer so automatically it is updated because this is the function so this is how you can create or you can use this pivot by function so we have completed our 10 advanced excel function if you like this video don't forget to share this video thank you so much for watching this video and if you want to learn more tricks and tips like this you can join my telegram channel and also you can get my excel plus ai courses you can check out the links that are available in descriptions